We're now on board HMS Cavalier, the last remaining Second World War destroyer of the Royal Navy, and now the memorial ship to the 142 destroyers and the 11,000 men that were lost on them. Welcome on board. During World War II, destroyers became the most in-demand ship type in the British fleet. The nature of naval warfare made them versatile ships, escorting convoys, anti-submarine warfare, air defense, reconnaissance, patrols, mine laying, mine sweeping, and fire support for landing troops. Destroyers were needed everywhere and in great numbers. Cavalier was uh, built uh, at White's. Uh, builder's yard, shipbuilding yard on the Isle of Wight uh, in the early part of 44. She was uh, part welded which was one of the first uh, ships, warships ever to be welded uh, and women were able to undertake this task because they um, it was a lighter work than the original riveting and hammering and and, but uh, because they couldn't trust the early welding, they only used it on the bow and the stern. They, the, the main structure of the ship was still riveted. During her building, um, the yard and the Isle of Wight suffered quite a, a few bombing raids from the Germans. Um, what they did, uh, these ships, all the ship, new ships, were being built all over the country. So that if one yard was bombed, then there were still others being built. Cavalier was one of the 112 destroyers built by British shipyards under the War Emergency Programme in 1939 to 1945. These ships were somewhat different from one another in terms of their armaments, equipment and design features, but they were all based on one successful destroyer design, which had been developed as far back as in 1936. Specifications of destroyer Cavalier. Length, 111 meters. Beam, almost 11 meters. Draft, almost 5 meters. Total displacement, 2,510 tons. Armament, primary armament. Four 114 millimeter QF L45 Mark IV guns in Mark V single mounts. Anti-aircraft artillery, one Bofors L60 twin mount caliber 40 millimeters, two twin and one single mounts with Orlikon autocannons caliber 20 millimeters, two quadruple Mark 8 torpedo tubes caliber 533 millimeters. The destroyer's power plant consists of two Admiralty boilers and two Parsons steam turbines, power 40,000 HP. Maximum speed, 32 knots. Cruising range, 3,900 miles at 20 knots. Part of Cavalier's modernization in later years was the addition of these squid mortars that would fire six mortars simultaneously at a target that had been detected by sonar. As well as more modern anti-submarine weapons with the squid mortar, HMS Cavalier was also modernised in her later life to include anti-aircraft missiles, the Sea Cat, which were fired from a seating position just in front of the launcher. OK, so we're now on the bridge of HMS Cavalier, uh, an open bridge as you can see. The canopy above our heads here is a later addition. During her time in the Second World War, particularly serving through the Arctic convoy, she didn't actually have this open bridge. This was really to protect the crew against the sun during her time in the Far East. Um, this really is one of the nerve centres of the ship, so commands could be issued from here through to the engine room, to the ops room, to gunnery control. Um, and this is a very unique space. This is the last Royal Navy destroyer in the, in the world that has an open surviving bridge like this.
We're now in the midships area of HMS Cavalier, now an open space. This space has been used to transport vehicles, Land Rovers, troops, any other equipment that's been required. Going back to her time during the Second World War, she was actually equipped with eight 21-inch Mark 8 torpedo tubes. Um, they were removed towards the end of the 50s in favour of the squid system, which you can now see at the aft end of the ship. Because defence plants were overloaded and there were disruptions in supplies, the destroyers were fitted with different armaments. However, though built under emergency conditions, Cavalier became one of the C-class destroyers, which received quick-firing 114mm main battery guns that could also engage aerial targets. I was a gunner on here. I have worked on A-gun, and uh, it could be very, very dangerous up there. Um, you wouldn't, today's health and safety, you would never get away with it. But uh, we, it, the guns were hand-loaded, uh, the shells were very heavy, and uh, the seas, uh, if the sea was coming over, we could have water running over our feet, you know, waves coming over the gun and, and whatever. When it was really bad, you couldn't fight the gun, you had to get, come away from that, you couldn't. This is the 4.5, 4.5 gun. It took a 50 pound shell. Uh, that's this one here. The cartridge weighed about 14, 15, no, 18 pounds. The shell and the cartridge were loaded into this tray. The tray went over and rammed the shell into the breech. When the gun fired, the gun recoiled. All this came back here. The empty cartridge was ejected and hit the net and fell on the deck. When you ended up with 20 of these rolling in the deck in rough weather, it could be quite dangerous. HMS Cavalier made her combat debut in November 1944. The destroyer participated in operations near the coast of Norway, and in February 1945, she escorted convoy RA-64, which was coming from Murmansk. During the cruise, Cavalier entered a violent storm, was seriously damaged, and it was a miracle that she reached home. For this mission, Cavalier was decorated with the Arctic 1945 Battle Honor. I spent three days in a typhoon off um, um, the Philippines and um, it is so bad that you, all you can do is hang on, especially up the front end of the ship. Um, as the ship dives under a wave, she stops and then shudders out, up out the next wave and then over the top of the next one and you've got waves 60 or 80 foot high you're going into and you have to arrange your movement around the ship. You're hanging on all the time. And as the ship goes down, you hang on. And then when she pauses, you move forward. And then as she's coming over and, and ready to drop again, she's perhaps dropping 30 foot, 40 foot, and you just hang on because it's like going down a fast lift. And when you hit the bottom, your knees buckle. <laughs> pretty horrendous to, to be living under those conditions. Very bad conditions, I wouldn't want to go through it again. And during the war they had the added fear that if they were attacked uh, and damaged or sunk, they wouldn't survive more than a couple of, a couple of minutes in the sea. As you know, a ship without sailors is a sophisticated but useless structure. Only a skillful and tight-knit crew can turn her into a formidable combat unit. The rules and traditions of naval service in the British fleet inevitably made the crew and the ship a single organism. Now here we are in one of Cavalier's mess decks. There would have been up to 225 people on board during the war, and that number dropped to about 180 in peacetime. 
Most of the crew had bunks like these, but some of them still had to sling hammocks even in 1972 when the ship was decommissioned. And in battle, that's 225 people who had to act as one body, and the ship's motto of one company further reinforced that point. Cavalier sailed on her last combat missions during World War II in the western approaches of the British Isles, escorting famous cruise liners, Queen Mary, Queen Elizabeth, and Aquitania. These fast ships carried thousands of US soldiers to Europe. Just before World War II, Queen Mary won the Blue Ribbon accolade as the fastest passenger vessel in the Atlantic. However, when Cavalier escorted liners carrying troops, she didn't lag behind by even an inch. She only proved the point of British sailors, who called destroyers the Navy's bloodhounds during the war. In 1971, Cavalier reaffirmed this nickname in the best manner possible. On July the 6th, Cavalier and another Royal Navy ship, Frigate Rapid, put to sea. Once or twice a year, every ship uh, did what they call a full speed trial. Two captains decided that um, to find out which ship was the fastest. So he laid down a challenge and it got so well known about this challenge that was going to take place that it even appeared in bookies, you know, the book bookmakers uh, on betting. Uh, people were betting <laughs> to see who was going to win. And uh, they met up when they were due to have this high, uh, this high speed uh, test and then decided to make it a race. They were almost neck and neck because the Rapid was almost identical to this, uh, to the Cavalier. She was the same hull design, uh, wartime built, same age, but she had been converted to a lighter frigate. Okay, during this race, uh, they, were up, they got up to about 33 knots, 34 knots, and um, they were neck and neck for a long time. And then suddenly, the, oh, they, they instructed the crew to go down aft and stand on the quarter deck because to dig the propellers in further. <laughs> They were still neck and neck towards the end of the race, but the Rapid then blew a safety valve. Uh, she, she blew this valve and lost some of her power, and uh, Cavalier just managed to creep ahead of her, only by about 20 yards. Um, you know, about 18 metres, I think it was, some, something like that. But she won anyway. <laughs> The race was run over 64 miles and two hours, and Cavalier won by a very, very, very small margin. She was awarded the Cock of the Fleet from the Courage Brewery, which you can still see today on the open bridge of HMS Cavalier. By the time Cavalier immortalised her name in the race against Rapid, she had already served in the Royal Navy for 27 years. In the mid-1950s, the destroyer underwent modernisation. In the 1950s and 1960s, she mostly served in Southeast Asia and the Middle East, taking part in the events that reshaped the political landscape in these regions. In 1972, the destroyer was decommissioned and could have met the end of her career at a scrapping yard. However, for the British people, the Navy is more than just a military branch. That's why it was a matter of national honor to preserve the last destroyer of World War II. Following a very long campaign to save HMS Cavalier, she actually arrived here in Chatham in 1999, is now berthed in number two dock here at the historic dockyard Chatham. But the dock itself has a very interesting history in its own right. It's actually the dock that HMS Victory 
uh, was launched from in 1765, obviously famous for Admiral Lord Nelson and the Battle of Trafalgar. The last British destroyer of World War II is now the central piece of the memorial located in Chatham Dockyard and dedicated to destroyers and people who perished in that war. Cavalier is permanently berthed near the monument, upon which, in a twist of fate, she is not mentioned. She survived and now preserves the memory of those who did not return home.